to another night of corporate prayer, of the training, activations, as well as a 30-minute teaching. Um, to those of you who is this your first time, my name is Prophetess Keisha Cephas. I am the prayer leader over the Shamar Intercessors. For you who are on Periscope, welcome to another night of our corporate prayer gathering. My name is Prophetess Keisha, as I stated before. If you want to share with your followers, please do so by pressing the icon to your right and then slide your screen up and then you can share with all of your followers as well as Twitter and uh, Facebook. Amen. How many of you, this is your first time being here? Oh, cool beans. Welcome. I promise you I am going to be good today. Amen. <laughs> All right, today I am going to teach on prayer as a lifestyle, um, and then from there I will teach from 7.31 up until 8 o'clock, and then from there we'll break off into groups. Uh, the groups are where is that we'll do the actual activations, meaning that you will pray. We'll give you a diving board, which is a subject. And then you'll begin to pray for one another, which will be prayer partners or what we call two on two. And then we'll break off into what I call a wheel within a wheel. And we'll be able to demonstrate what that looks like. And then I wanna also tell you, do not be afraid. This is a safe ground for you. It is a safe place. It is a training place. We are here to equip you. We are here to train you and teach you. So you do not have to be afraid. There be monitors, those who will walk around and they will be the ones who measure where you're at. I always say that our weaknesses are coaching opportunities. And so wherever you may be weak, that's what we're here for to strengthen you in your prayer life, amen. And if you have any questions, you can access questions after the session is complete. Amen. All right. Today we want to talk about prayer as a lifestyle. Prayer is something that we live. It's something that we do. It's not something that we dread. It's not a duty. It, it is who we become. And as we learned on last week, we talked about revive our hearts and we wanted to diagnose what was in our heart that did not look like Jesus because God was applying this pressure upon our heart with his word. And a lot of us learned that there was ill feelings in our heart, unforgiveness in our heart, strife in our heart, and anything that did not represent God or look like God, God was beginning to reveal it. Why? Because he is a revealer and he wanted to heal us in every area that would make us get back to a place of prayer. I always tell people that prayer is our life. It is the thriving force in our life. You need to have a relationship with the Father. And one way to have that relationship is to know his word. And one way to strengthen your prayer life is to know his word. And so prayer is not something hard. Sometimes we make it hard by some of the teachers that we sit under. And so we try to measure ourselves up to them. But I want you to know that God will meet you exactly where you are. So if you at the beginning level, you just got acquainted with the father he will meet you right there and so if you don't know many scriptures get you one get you two and whatever you want to target the God always have an opinion about everything that we face in life we were created in his image and after his likeness he always has an opinion for everything that we may face he always has an opinion for even against our opposition so one way to get to know him is to study the word you never want to go into a battle or you never want to talk or have this relationship with someone where they only have something to say and you don't have anything to say back. And the only way you're going to know who's talking to you is by knowing his word because the devil talks as well. Amen. And so you want to get you a word life. You want to study the word. You want to rightly divide the word. You want to define the word. When you don't have an understanding of the word, you want to ask questions because Learning that word. This is how you build up your vocabulary in prayer. Yes. Are you getting some so far? All right. So the Bible tells us in Jeremiah 29 and 3 that God knows what? He knows the thoughts and the plans that he has towards us. His thoughts towards us are good and they not are of evil. Correct? He is the God that comes to give us an expected end. So if we have a God that knows every thought, his thoughts toward us is good, his plans towards us is good, why not seek a God who knows everything about us? A God who has 
his heart towards us. Don't you want to know that kind of father, Abba, the one who rules, the one who reigns, the one who is sovereign, the one who saved us, the one who is gracious towards us, the one who draws us with his love and kindness. So when you go into this prayer closet and you begin to build up this relationship with him, ask him to meet you right where you are. Without six steps to get there, meet me where I'm at, God. I knew two scriptures. What drew me into this place with God? My marriage. Perfect topic, right? Perfect subject. The enemy was after my marriage. Opposition. Coming to destroy that which I want to keep. So I learned some scriptures in regards to my husband. He is the head of this house. God is the head of him. I am his glory. He is to love me as Christ loves his church. He is to dwell with me as one of the weaker vessel, right? There cannot be no division among us because if we are divided, the Father will not hear our prayers. So I began to pray for him. But before I was able to pray for him, I had to pose questions to God. What's in my heart that's preventing this thing from working? So God had to reveal to me. He's a revealer, right? He revealed to me what's in me first. So before I can start targeting what's in my husband, targeting the opposition or that which is opposing me and him, I had to first learn what was in my own heart. Revive my heart. What's not like you, God? My smart mouth. Me being rebellious, me being stubborn, me being full of pride. Only God can reveal those things to you because surely you're not going to look at yourself like that. Putting a mirror to your face and say, this is who you are. But this is who I created you to be. This does not have to stay in you. How bad do you want this thing? And even when it looks like the enemy is getting, he is gaining momentum in this place, God still gives you the strength in prayer to endure it. Because Second Chronicles 20 15 says that this battle is not ours. This opposition is not ours. This thing that is coming up against us is not ours. But this battle is the Lord. So it's a battle. So when you start to learn how to pray, you're going to get the word in you first. Because if you can get that word in your heart, no matter what comes out of you, the first thing you're going to do is put God back in, the re in remembrance of his word towards you and towards anything that you may face. A lot of people always ask for prayer. They want you to go into battle for them. But th there is a time in this season when you're going to have to learn how to fight for yourself. Yeah. Good. You can't expect anyone to go into battle for you and you're not willing to fight as well. You can't want somebody to want to pray for you and you don't want to pray for yourself. You have to ask questions as well. Why am I facing this? It's not always because you have done something wrong. What is God trying to get out of you? So he can get something into you. Yeah. What is the enemy doing? You should be able to know what the enemy is doing. Amen. All right. We're getting some so far. The word. Heaven and earth will pass away. But God's word will forever stand. Prayer. It's not something we do sometimes. It's something we do all the time. On every occasion. Always. It's not only I pray because I'm in something. I'm going through something. I pray when times are going well. I pray when times are good, bad, ugly, indifferent. It doesn't matter. I have to have a prayer life. That is my lifeline. It's my communication with the Father. It's the time that I have dialogue with the Father. It's the time when we have this two-way communication. I'm talking to him and he's talking back to me. And when you start building this relationship, he moves you from just praying for yourself. Now you become selfless and you begin to pray for somebody else. And then when he teaches you how to pray for someone else, then you become this intercessor where you begin to stand in the gap between that which is opposing that which God wants to do in a person's life or on a global event or his city, community, leaders, and so forth. But it starts in your prayer closet. Sometimes we want to skip the prayer closet and say I'm an intercessor. But I know most intercessors are built and trained in a prayer closet, in the secluded place. Those who are of us who are called to intercession, we start in a prayer closet, then he brings us into a corporate environment, then he gives an, uh, us an assignment like lead prayer, train in prayer, activate those in prayer. Then he moves us out of this out of the out of this type of environment where I'd say 
like in a set place, then he takes us and some of us will become traveling intercessors with the gift mix, like prophet, evangelist, pastor, or teacher. But you need a prayer life. How many of you say, I don't study my word enough? You're going to have a weak prayer life because you don't have communication. You don't have verbiage. You don't have anything really to say. How many of you say, I do pray, but I feel like I'm praying amiss. Like it's not targeting anything. I feel like uh, maybe I'm saying the right stuff. Maybe I'm not saying the right words. How many of you feel that way? It's the enemy, I promise you. If you know that you are praying the word, you're going to have to have enough faith that God hears your prayers. This is the confidence that I have in you. Whatsoever I ask you in prayer, you hear me and you answer me. How many of you only pray when things are going bad? Come on. For real? Y'all a good crowd. What is, oh, Miss Queen. She, at least she's telling the truth. Because sometimes when things are not going well with us, then it seems like that moves us to prayer. But I would declare to you that you want to pray before things go bad. Yes. Set up. Set it up. Set up some treasure in heaven. Set it up. Study your word. Read your word. Meditate on your word. Get this prayer life. Get you some index cards. If you have a hard time remembering scriptures, write it down. And then ponder on those scriptures day and night until you get it into your heart. So that way when you're praying, you can put God back in remembrance of his word. Amen. Amen. Turn to Luke 18. Because some people say it doesn't take all that. I beg to differ. Luke 18 says that we shall always pray. Always. And if you look at Luke 18, 2 through 8, you will see the widow going before the judge. A judge who does not reverence God, a judge that does not fear God, and a judge who does not care about man. But she applied pressure on him with prayer. Because that's an example about prayer. She kept coming and coming and coming in regards to a request. She said, defend me. Protect me. Avenge me. And he got tired of her coming before him. Now what more would our God do for us when we're facing opposition? A God who defends. A God who protects. A God who does not turn his ear deaf towards us. Protect me. Defend me. Even in the midst of opposition. Cause me to be strengthened in the midst of it. Without the word you can't fight. Without the word, you are weaponless. Without the word, you don't even understand who you are to God. Abba, Father, a sovereign God, a gracious God, a God that moves upon the deep of our heart. Even when we're in darkness, he calls light to come in by his word. A God who fills void places the same way he did in the book of Genesis. When we're feeling void, you get the word and you'll no longer feel void. You'll feel complete. God. Abba, Father, the one who revives hearts, the one who strengthens us, the one that reminds us who we are. I created you in my image, and after my likeness, surely I will defend my own. With the word, prayer life, he builds us one word at a time. The more words you get, the stronger you are in prayer. And the more words you get, the more you're able to stand against the enemy. But it's not always about the opposition. It's about being in communion with a God who a God who is willing to talk to you. A God who reminds you of your purpose, of your destiny. One who tells you this is the way. The one that says in a still small voice behind you, go this way. That kind of God. When you get into his presence, there is a fullness of joy. He brings about strength. He brings about liberty. He's a God that delivers in the midst of you. And even when you don't have nothing to say, he's still a God that speaks. And he's still a God that loves. He's still a God that strengthens. A God that heals in his presence is the fullness of joy. There is peace, there is grace, there is mercy, and his word is what you hear even in the secret place. God, Abba, Father, the one that we love to be in his presence, there is no one like him. He's a good God, and when you get into his presence, sometimes you don't want to leave that place. Yeah. God, 
a place of prayer, my lifestyle, my devotion. You, God, I love to be in your presence. I can't go a day without being in your presence. I love talking to you in the daytime, in the afternoon, in the evening. Upon my bed, you instruct me, me, God, my heart. I love communicating with you, having this dialogue, this God who never turns his back on me, this God who will never fail. That's the kind of God you want to be in communion with. Here, pray. This God. When I'm weak, he is strong. He demonstrates his power within me. But I have to say something to him. He knows all things, but yes, I still have to say something to him. The other day I went to work and I said, something is missing. I'm a little distracted today. What happened? And I turned around to the to my peer. I said, oh my God. I got so caught up trying to get to work on time. I didn't spend any time with God like I know you. And she looked at me and I said, I'm sorry. Can you cover for me at least 10 minutes? I have to say something to him. I need to command my day. And she looked at me and she said, go ahead. I'll cover for you. I was so hurt that I didn't have this time with him. It's like me and my husband. We are one. You think I'm going to go a day without talking to that man? I love when he enters the door. I can hear him when he comes. Before he even reaches the place, I can sense that he's on his way. I love it. Here he comes. Here come y'all dead. And I smile. You know, some people are like, oh God, here come that man. Not me, I'm happy. Same way with God. I expect him to show up. Yeah. I know when my husband gets ready to call before he calls. Or if he sends a text, I can sense that text is already there. And I go and check my phone. And sure enough, he got a request. Or he sent an I love you or whatever. But I love it. That's the same way, same way with God. Expecting him to be in the place. Wherever you are, he is. Prayer. I love it. I love it. People ask me how many times I pray throughout my day. My husband leaves at 445. I get up. I read my Bible. I read my book. The one I'm reading today. Possessing the Gates of the Enemy by Cindy Jacobs. And then from there I'm going to pray. Me and God. And hate for my daughter to get up to interrupt it. Because I know she got questions. But she knows not to come in there if she hear me praying. She won't interrupt it because she respects it. But I love to talk to him in the shower, washing dishes, mopping the floor, sweeping the floor. It doesn't matter. Sometimes I think we try to create this time and space that limits us from talking to the Father and the Father talking to us. Create this time where it's that you're always in communication with the Father. Even if your mouth is not moving, it should be pondering on scripture. Because sometimes you may not have all the time to pray. But your heart should be communicating to the Father. How do you communicate? With the Word. With the Word. Because what? Everything else in this world is communicating to us. Whether it's on social media, whether it's on TV, it doesn't matter whether it's your peer, your husband, whatever the case may be, the world is communicating to us. So you should allow your heart to communicate to the Father without any restriction there. Ponder on the scripture. Ponder on it. Ponder on it. I'm still believing prophetic words to come to pass. And I'm always putting God back in. You said God. You said God. You promised me. Surely I will not leave this earth until you fulfill every word that you have promised me. Yes, it hurts. Sometimes we back away from the Father because we're going through tough times. But I promise you, allow God to apply that pressure on you that the better you comes out. There's a greater person on the inside of you you haven't met yet. Prayer will bring that person out. You will begin to learn things about you, your purpose, your destiny. And like I said, you move from you to praying for somebody else, intercede for someone else. But you will not be able to pray effectively if you don't have a prayer life now. Get in your closet. Get in a secluded place. What does this mean, God? What are you saying, God? Define this. What is that? 
He loves for us to answer, ask him questions. He got plenty of answers. Plenty of answers. God, the Father, the Revealer, the Mediator, the One who dwells in us, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, the Helper, the Comforter, the Advocate, the One who stands on stand, always on standby, the Shrimpner. But you wouldn't know that if you don't have the Word. Prayer, two-way communication. Sometimes, like this morning, I went into prayer to talk, and he said, no, I want to talk to you. Let me start it off today. I have something to say to you. Why are you so agitated and irritated and frustrated? And I'm saying to myself, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I just feel like maybe it's just too much today. No, because you're trying to take on burdens that I didn't give you. My inbox on Facebook is filled to its capacity. And the Father asks me, are you God or am I God? Why are you letting the people seek you as my creation versus me as the creator? You can't answer every prayer. You are here to teach people how to pray. People want you to go into battle for them. But I'm going to show you how to train them how to go into battle. In a simple way. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. You want to answer? Read it. Some people are looking for quick fixes. But let me tell you something. Some things are worth fighting for. How bad do you want it? Read your Bible. You want to answer? Read your Bible. Then you come and seek somebody to be in agreement with you. But don't have people acting like they're psychics, trying to figure out what's going on with you. You should have sensed it. The devil is a liar. You should have been transparent. I'm not going to guess what you are in need of. Make your request be made known. And even if it hurts, in all things, give God thanks. Rejoice in it. For he caused all things to work together for your good. Not some things, only for those who are called according to his purpose. Sometimes we're looking for a quick fix. It's many times I ask people, can you pray for me? Can, how do we really know they're praying for us? You have more faith in a person than that which has created you. Him. How we really know they're praying for us? Because sometimes we say, oh, I'm praying for you. And it's a lie. It's really, it's a lie. People forget. But I'll tell you who won't forget. Jesus, all-knowing, all-seeing. Don't put your faith in a person. Put your faith in your creator. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Him, if we're going to believe that he's God, we must believe that he's God all by himself. By himself. Put your faith in God. Yes, it's okay to link up with somebody to pray and you guys come into agreement because there's power in agreement. But don't have somebody to go into battle when you're not willing to fight your own battle. Or we're just lazy. We can't be lazy. You want somebody else to go into a prayer closet and you sitting up there eating chicken. <laughs> Looking at young and the restless. And we fight. Oh God, do it for your glory. And we going in tongues and we warn and you just sitting at the TV. <laughs> Did you go on the fast? No. Did you read your word? No. Well, what am I doing? I can't be doing this with somebody else. There are some times when you do need strength. But at least start by asking God some questions first. At least say, okay, what is this? God, what are you doing in me? What are you doing through me? Why now? Where are you taking me to from this point? Because sometimes everything is not the devil. And we blame him. Then we call him stupid. The devil is not stupid. He's very strategic. The people who are slow is the Christians who are not strategic. We get blindsided. Why do you think Jesus rebuked the disciples? 
because they would sleep on their watch. He, he wasn't talking to them, why are you sleeping, not praying for me? What he was saying is, you need to be watching and praying so you won't be tempted. Temptation only comes to the parts that we are vulnerable in. So when you hear about people falling into temptation, you got to ask, where you sleep on your watch? Because we shouldn't be blindsided. We shouldn't fall into temptation when God has already made a way of an escape for us. According to 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Where you sleep on your watch. So when you find people always in to sin, sleep on their watch. When you find people always weak, sleep on their watch. Sleep in the spirit. And then you have those who are paralyzed by fear. Write that down. When God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. When we have fear, we have no power, we have no love, and we don't have sound mind. Fear, it paralyzes us. It torments us. It keeps us from believing what God has said about us. Where there is fear, perfect love has not been perfected. So when fear comes up, ask God where love has not been perfected. What's in me that does not love? Because fear cancels out love. Fear is an enemy to love. And if Jesus is love, then somewhere Jesus is not residing. And we all have it. We all have it. Apostle say, you going with me to travel. No, I'm not. Uh, because you don't know how to act when you travel. And... Uh, I start measuring like, am I worth it? Can I do it? Why me? Because when he prophesied, he's going to call out their mama name, their daddy name, their anniversary, their birthday. And he has this great habit of dropping the microphone in your hand after he does it. Your turn. You don't call out everything in their family. What am I going to say? So I battle in my head. And say, maybe I'm not, maybe I'm just inadequate. Maybe I'm not ready. But then God tells me, if you open up your mouth, I will fill it. Because this is not about you. Amen. This is not about measuring your gift to his gift. And it's never about works. It's never about works. So when he asks you to travel with him, know that it's me, not him. He's just an agent to help build you. To help polish you. To help train you. To activate you. And yes, I'm here for your fear. For your fear. But only prayer and having this, communi this communication with the Father or this dialogue, I'll be able to hear that. Otherwise, I'll turn down everything he asks me to do. I don't want to do that. Get up and teach. Teach what? I think I'm too simple. I think I'm this. I think I'm that. I'm thinking this. And he said, do your job. Do your job. He can be really rude sometimes. I'd be like, Apostle, no, because, you know. And he'd be like, do your job. I'm going to do my job. You're rude. Like, I've been waiting 15 minutes for you to respond and tell me about my season. And you tell me to do my job with some glasses and a smiley face. Do your job. You're well able to do it. But it takes this relationship with the Father and say, you know what, God? If you call me, surely you are perfected. If you call me, you justified it. If you call me, you qualified me. If you call me, then there's an assignment in me that only I can fulfill or you're going to pass me over if I allow fear to paralyze me. Only prayer can get you there. Because now you're having this dialogue with the Father. This is who I am. When that devil comes to me in, my, in the midnight hours and tell me he wants to kill me, you didn't give me life and you can't take my life. But you have to know this is who God created you to be. How can you miss days without praying? Days, the central part of you, the heart of you, that which pumps through your veins, the heart part of you, that shall always be the forefront. Prayer. Prayer. Nothing comes in between this. Prayer. Nothing can cut off this communication. Prayer. Whatever is in me, God, get it out because I don't want nothing to cut off this communication with you. Prayer. Yeah. 
prayer. Whatever it is I need to get over, whatever it is I need to be delivered, as long as it doesn't separate, God, get it out of me. Prayer. In that secret place. Another thing we forget about, fasting. Oh, it's a cuss word in the church. <laughs> fasting. Couple it with prayer. It'll humble you, I promise you. Some people fast for cars, houses, you know, to become debt free. But fasting deals with you and your heart. He begins to reveal what's really in there. Yeah. Today he told me, frustrated. You so, so, so can be so mean. <laughs> I'm still on the mean thing, y'all, because I'm trying to figure out why I'm so mean. I don't think I'm mean. I feel like, you know, my tongue can be sharp, but sometimes my facial expressions are ugly. I looked at my peer today like, I know you're not talking to me. <laughs> and I know she was looking like, ugh, I'm, ugh. Then I went upstairs and repented like, why was I looking at her like that? That was just ugly. But sometimes, sometimes you don't even have to say it. It's your look. Get out my face. What do you want today? Don't you see? I'm not in the mood. Just moody. A moody demon. That's what I wake up with sometimes. Have you ever woke up and just moody for no reason? You don't want to talk to anybody. You don't want to be bothered with anybody. And you just look ugly all day. And you cater to that demon. Until God started talking to you, stop being so ugly. You don't look like me. You look like hell right now. Help us. And I'll be saying, forgive me, God. I don't even know. Cleanse me. <laughs> forgive me means temporary fix. Repent means you turn away from it and you never do it again. I haven't got to repentance yet. I'm still trying, though. Because my looks will kill you sometimes. But I'm telling you about me. Can you see what's in you? Can you be transparent what's in you? What's operating in you? Yes. Who said yes? <laughs> yeah, I told you about your countenance yesterday. Was that Sunday? Just ugly. But you was like, yeah, this me. <laughs> but I can talk to you like that because you're my mentee, right? Okay. I love you with all of me too because you have my heart. But the spirit of you talking? Oh, I love you. <laughs> Cause you was about to get something that you didn't even want. That thing was coming, it was going, it was going to cut you so deep and you was going to go downstairs and tell a pass on me. How many of you read your word at least once a day? How many of you take a scripture that you ponder on throughout the day? How many of you write the word down to ponder on it? How many of you pray at least once a day? How many of you feel like you need to be strengthened in your prayer life? <laughs> Jesus. Yes, God. We're in the right place at the right time at the right moment. How many of you can truly say that you really don't understand what you're saying in prayer? We're about to be calm like this. Because that's, that's telling the truth. When I first started, I had no clue what I was talking about, but I was desperate. I was desperate. And God met me right there. My mom kept saying, just talk to him like you're talking to a friend. And I kept saying, but he's invisible. You want me to talk to an invisible God about some problems that I have going on today? She said, talk to him like a friend because he is a friend. He's a friend. And those two scriptures that you got, you'll have two, three, and then you'll move. The more you talk to him, you'll start hearing him for yourself. And I was like, okay, but it looks like Mike, Mike, I'm going to have to talk about you. It looks like Mike is getting worse while I'm talking to, to God about this issue about our marriage. And my mama said, you're focusing on, on Mike when you really need to be focusing on you. Yes, you're going to have some issues. But you got to ask God, especially married couples, what's in me first before I start working on and praying on what the issue is with my spouse. Mothers, fathers, with your children, you will have days where you feel like you're disappointed, let me tell you. But do not force Jesus upon your children. You demonstrate Jesus before your children. 
and they will choose him if you train them up the right way. But do not force what you want for their life. And yes, you train them up, but sometimes they deviate from the plan. But do not tell your children that they are a disappointment to you. Because Jesus has never said that we are a disappointment to him. And we have failed over and over and over again. When both of my girls got pregnant, I wanted to die, literally. Because it shocked me. Though I've seen it, you try to pray it away. God, don't let this happen. God, don't do this. But there are some things you can't pray away when it comes to your children. It is their journey. And you're just going to have to be a coach in the midst of their journey. Prayer will make, your children will make you pray. It's either pray or cussing. And because I don't want to cuss and sin, sin against God, I get on my face. When that baby girl came up pregnant, I wanted to, whoo, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I was devastated, hurt. But prayer, and even though everybody else was trying to pray for me, and I, and I thank God for godly counsel, but there's nothing like God telling you to get up. Get up. You had two hours to mourn over this. Get up and begin to demonstrate who I am to her. Demonstrate love. Demonstrate mercy. Demonstrate grace. Yes. Only a relationship with the Father can get you to do that. Because he take out your heart and give you his heart for that person. And she like, oh, I'm just going to abort the baby. No, you're not. This baby is a gift. This baby is a blessing. This baby is not a mistake. This baby has a purpose. This baby has a destiny. Yes, it's outside of where not. But, 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 you are forgiven the moment that you repented. Yeah. So don't make this cheat, what we call Jesus thing, hard for our children. The reason why a lot of kids don't want to come to Christ is because of what, how we represent him. We make him look like he's not forgiving. He's not gracious. He's not loving. But he is. He is. But only way you can get that is by having a relationship with the father. He's not our natural daddy. Sometimes I do that. with my Because I didn't have a natural father, I really couldn't comprehend what it means to have a heavenly father. And God knows a spiritual father. What is that? What is that? Especially if you came from out of one church where they said there was a spiritual father and then you get over to a new one, you're like, I don't, you can keep your spiritual daddies. Because I don't, I don't want any parts of that. You worse than my natural daddy. He wasn't even in my life. <laughs> what the heck? But you can't let one person spoil your relationship with somebody else. Don't punish somebody who God has sent to you because what has happened to you at the hands of another. The only way you can get that is in a place of prayer. He'll reveal it to you. You ask God, can they be trusted? He'll tell you whether or not they can be trusted. If you ask him, was that really a spiritual father? He'll start telling you, no, he was a trainer. You called him daddy. I did. Help us. I said he was a teacher. You called him daddy. You called him spiritual father. Now you hurt and say, it's a church hurt. It's not a church hurt, it's a person hurt. One person, two people. But you only get that in a place of prayer. You get healing in a place of prayer when you're wounded. <sighs> woe is me. Yeah, woe is you. If you don't get on your face. It's gonna always be some woes. But God, say but God, but God. In, prayer, in prayer, he will heal me. He will heal me. But, God, but God, in prayer, in prayer he, will build me. he will build me. But God, but God in, prayer, in prayer, he will deliver me. He will deliver me. It's in prayer. Sometimes we come in here for people to do it and God wants to do it. How you know the person that's laying their hands on you, their hand is not empty? Just little empty hands just laying them on you. You don't know whether or not if they heart is in right standards with the Father. Come on, how many pretenders we have in the church? Plenty. 
but we'll put more trust in a person than the creator of the person. Right? Oh, I just believe, Prophetess Keisha, if you come into agreement with me, God will do it. In agreement with what? You figure it out. People at the altar asking me to figure it out at the altar. So I wave my hand and say, next. So when you see me waving my hand quick, it's because that person is in this. What do you want me to do? You, you can't even give me language of what you want. Nope, next. Is somebody more desperate than you? Who knows? Who's crying out? Because you up here playing. Sometimes you just pass them back. Go talk to, let me see, pass the or Maybe she can hug it out of you. <laughs> Go talk to Dr. Emma. Maybe she can pop, pop it out of you. <laughs> but for me, I can't waste time. If you want to have a better prayer life, you have to go for it for yourself. You got to get in the Word for yourself. You have to study for yourself. You have to spend time with the Father for yourself. Then link up with somebody else. But don't want somebody to go into battle and you're not ready, or you want them to do the work and fight for you and you're not ready. You have to read your word for yourself. God will reveal himself to you by way of his word. If you don't have it, you don't take the time, you won't have it. You're not going to get anything out of it. Wednesday after Wednesday, for those who go to Bible class, because everybody is not from here, Sunday after Sunday, God is constantly talking to us. Why not put that back into rotation? We have prayer directives. Put that into um, rotation. You can build off of there. If you have issues in your finances, it's plenty of scriptures in the Bible about your finances. If you have any issues with your identity, find you some scriptures on identity. It'll help you get language and build up your vocabulary for prayer. Prayer is not hard. I promise you it's not. I can open up my mouth just like that and pray. Sometimes when I'm in here, it's more aggressive because it's warfare. But at home, the same way I'm talking to you now is the same way I talk to the Father. And when I'm feeling discouraged, I just tell him, I feel discouraged. The other day I told him, I feel afraid. I am afraid of this season. I see what you're doing, but I am afraid. Help me. Give me courage to get through this season. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Because I have seen many people at their pinnacle and fall because they left you out of the equation. Keep me humble in this season. I see what you're doing. I know that it's great and it's good, but I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Help me. Help me. Humble me. Keep me humble. Give me the courage. Set my face like a flint. Let my forehead be harder than those that I stand before. And then God, give me the boldness I need to stand and teach prayer across this globe in the way you created me to teach it. And I don't want to be, I don't want to sound like anybody else. When you close your eyes, I want you to be able to say, that was Prophetess Keisha, not Prophetess Juanita Bynum, or whatever her name is. And I want you to be able to hear God and see God. But not me trying to be like somebody else. But the only way that I can get that it is that is in prayer. My identity, my purpose, my destiny, my assignment, my message. And that's the only way you can get it. People always ask you, what is your purpose? Did you seek the Father to ask him what your purpose is? Yes, you can be prophesied to and thank God for the prophetic word. But when was the last time you asked the Father? Who am I? Why was I born? My purpose, the reason, my message, my gift, my mantle. What is that? Why now? Why me? For what? My gift, I know it. Gift to teach. Office, prophet, mantle, watchman, my ward, prayer. Like Ezekiel, he snatches me up in between two worlds and allows me to see what is going on between heaven and earth. His friend, he shares his secrets with me. Intercessor, special grace to pray for long lengths of time. Everybody doesn't have it. 
But we all call to pray. We all call to intercede. But there are those who are called to intercession. Those who he has built in a place of a secluded place. Me. I understand what my call is, what my message is, what my mantle is, what my ward is, what my purpose is. But the only way you can get that is in prayer. Building up this relationship with the Father. That you're not wandering around wondering, who am I? Who are you? Can you answer that today? Besides, I'm a child of God. I'm blessed and highly favored. Praying for the rest, whatever that lady told me. Going beyond the surface. Who are you? Is your homework assignment. Stand up. And you need a scripture to support it. Who are you? Your next question. What is my assignment? Are you writing it down? Because you're going to need it. What is my assignment? Who are you? What is my message? And who I'm called to? Who am I? What is my message? Who I'm called to? And you can put for what purpose? You need a scripture to support each and every one of those points. I think we still need to deal with our hearts. You still need about six more scriptures on the heart. Your next question, what's in my heart that does not look like you? Because if that is in your heart and it doesn't look like the Father, you're not going to come into your purpose. You will not fulfill your assignment. Everybody got it? Six scriptures on the heart. Who am I? What's my assignment? The whole purpose. You can even ask them about mantles. And if you don't know what a mantle is, go to find it. If you don't know what a ward is, is it worship? Is it to the men, women's ministry? Is it prayer? And a lot of people try to pick prayer. <laughs> But to guard prayer, you have to be able to see what's coming in and out of these gates. So that means that you can't be in your flesh. You have to learn how to soar with God. To be his friend and he give you your secrets. You, his secrets, you can't be a gossiper. Because he does not share secrets with gossipers. Who are you? That'll challenge you in prayer. Next, who am I to pray for in these next seven days? Be sensitive to God either he shows you by way of a dream or someone's name just comes to your heart. Those are indicators that they need prayer. It doesn't matter who it is, just pray. And then you will notice God will move you into intercession. First, you'll probably start off with thanksgiving, you know, praying a general prayer for their life. Then you'll find yourself interceding between standing in the gap, making up the hedge, and now you're coming against opposition. God will start giving you language for that. But ask God who should you pray for in the next couple of days. Miss Queen say somebody gave, God gave her a name. Sometimes we're like, oh, I was just thinking about you. But could it be that God wants you to stand in the gap for that person and pray for that person? We don't know what someone is going through. Let that be an assignment. Whatever is agitating you, irritating you, frustrating you, ask God why is he applying pressure there? Y'all got a lot of homework, right? Okay, because this is going to keep you on your face. And then that will take you off Facebook. All right, next seven days, no Facebook. Oh my God, did I hit your demon? Yes, I did. <laughs> this is what happens when you come to activations. So the only thing you should post, so you shouldn't be, you know, scrolling through and seeing what everybody else is doing. For those of us who have to post, well, I only post once, you know, so. Okay, no Facebook, God. I, cool. No Facebook. See you on next Tuesday for Facebook. So Tuesday after prayer, 
You are not on Facebook. Let that be your challenge. You are not on Instagram. Hello. You can be on Periscope for those who teach, Monica, I know, who teach on Periscope and listen to Apostle or whomever else, but no Instagram, no Facebook. How many with me? We do it every year. Challenge yourself. Now your finger is gonna press, wanna press on the icon. So for those of you who have a finger demon, go ahead and delete the icon when you leave here today. Just delete it, and then you can always put it back on next Tuesday night. So take, just delete it. If you don't wanna disobey, just delete the icon. I know, cause my finger will tap it in a minute. Just delete it. Just delete the icons, okay? Oh, Twitter, for those who like Twitter. I'm Snapchat, don't know what it is? Okay, Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Tell your people like most people say, oh, I'm gonna be away for a little bit on this, you know, Facebook thing. Tell them it was the Lord's doing and it was good in his eyes. Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram. All right, then I want you to choose a day. See, this thing gets real. Choose a day that you will fast outside of Tuesday. Tuesday we fast from six in the morning to the end of the press session. And a lot of you didn't fast today because my stomach was growling aggressively today. So I know you didn't fast. I had cats fighting in my stomach today. When we say we doing something, we are one. And when you break it, the other person has to pay the price for it. And I paid for it. Choose a day. Outside of Tuesday, that you will fast unto the Lord. And you need a director. Why are you fasting? I know, sugar. Girl, Jesus is real. <laughs> All right, Vicki, what's the homework assignment? Uh, six scriptures on the heart. Ask God your purpose, your mandate, who are you called to and why. No social media of any sorts unless you do teaching on Periscope. No Snapchat, no Facebook, no Twitter, no Instagram. Fasting? Oh, uh, find another day to fast outside of the week other than Tuesdays. Uh... Directors. Oh, yeah. Find you a director, know why you're fasting, uh, and extra clarity and insight. Come on, boo boo. That's my support. Leader. All right, did you get anything out of it? Yeah. Who mad? Yeah. Tell the truth. Yeah. What? Well, Lucia says she's mad. <laughs> but nothing but the devil, right? I promise you, you are going to realize when you take away social media, how much time you really have. I promise you. I promise you. Next week, we'll probably try TV. Hello? Uh-huh. I know Scandal is coming back. I oh, know. How to get away with a murder? She's back. But I guarantee you, when we start eliminating some of these things, you'll see what was really buying for your attention. I promise. Still mad? I love you anyway. Are you coming back next week? Yes. All right, let's do activations. Two on two, find your partner. Periscope, that goes for you too with your cute self. Monitors, I know you all are not in a circle. You are monitor. Who me? You are monitor. You must. Oh, hey, man, hey, man. Hey. Where you been? Where you been? Here. I was back last week. At the back. I thought you'd be frowning on Does everyone have a partner?
Is there another male that does not have a partner? Anybody else? It's, it's American. Okay. You know what? Get you a married, right? Okay, Alma, where's your wife? Okay, wife go with wife and husband go with husband. You two can be partners. That's cute, you kind of back there. Hey, sugar. Oh, look at her with all of her. <laughs> Made a baby. And he's going to be the partner. Cool. So, be the partner. You, Rashida, be a, be a monitor. You know her. Come to me, my love, love. Nicole, I know you're here. I got you, okay? Who needs a partner? You're gonna be his partner? Okay, and it's just you? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just you. Oh, here you go. All right, we're good now? Okay, because everybody can count, right? Two on two. All right, so, short person, ask your partner what their specific need is, and you only need one need tonight, not a whole list, just one specific need. One need. What is one need that we can pray for tonight? Huh? It better not be about a million in the same. We're not playing tonight. A specific need. And you should be able to give language to that. And no, we are not guessing tonight what your need is. I said one need, not your grocery list. One need. One specific need. You two already gave your needs. That's what I'm talking about. Me and just boom. There it is. Are we ready? All right, do we need to speak in our heavenly language? I do believe so. And do not allow uh, fear to grip your heart. When you guys come together and pray and you pray the word of God, I promise you, the Lord himself will bring it to pass. We don't have to watch over that word that is his job to bring it to pass. Amen. You're just coming in agreement with your neighbor. That's it. That's all. Amen. All right. Shorties, you got the need? All right now, shorties. Let's start uh, speaking in our heavenly language. Let's build ourselves up. For those who are filled with the Holy Spirit, Shedo Basun de la Lava Catala Lava Shaga, Rishi Kiri Nanda de Diosi Kiri Nanda de Diosa, Reshe Kenalo Santa Lava Kaga, Reshe Kenalo Sindela Lava, Rishi Kia, Rondela Sin Kiri Nanda de Diosa, Kenalo Santa Lava Shaga, Reshe 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 Kenalo Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, first we come to give you glory and honor. We come to bless your holy name in its place on today, God. We come to lift you high and above every situation and every circumstance. For your good and your mercy endure forever. For we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. For this is the day that you have made. We come to rejoice and be glad in it, God. We come to give you thanks in all things. In the mighty name of Jesus, for you said Jesus, Father, we declare and decree that the spirit of fear will not paralyze those that is a part of this activation. For you have not given them the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. We come together as one in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth. We come like iron, for iron sharpens iron. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare and decree from tonight. So we come. 
promises. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bless you in this place. We glorify you in this place. We lift you up in this place. And Father, we ask that you forgive us of all our sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness.
love that you have for her, oh God. Every call in the in the circle. Come on, start formulating circles. Doesn't matter who you are, who you with. Wheel within a wheel, and then we're going to give you a diamond board. Come on, start formulating circles in the middle aisle. This will teach you how not to be distracted, and it also shows you what a hedge looks like. We need, we can get a circle up here. Raise 
Now remember, we not prophesying, so you don't have to declare and announce pronouns, okay? And we not preaching the prayer, oh God said, and no, just pray. You don't need a hoop with your prayer. Shorties, keep your hand up, shorties. Oh, look at my little football. So everybody has a circle now, right? All right. Vicky, where are you? Diamond board. All right, so we pray for identity. So the person in the middle is your leader. You outside the circle is the hedge. You will listen to what that person is praying, and then you're going to get in the circle, the next person, so. She'll have you in, and you'll get in the circle, and then you are going to continue with, continue with identity, but you're going to try to make sure you don't repeat everything she prayed. So it's teaching you how to listen without being distracted. Because the enemy speaks at the same time that we're trying to pray to. So you have to learn not to be distracted. You have to soar above all distractions. Okay? So, but it's also teaching you how to follow the leader and not to break the edge. If you get off topic, we're going to attack you. So don't be offended. This is teaching you how to stay on topic. I did it. Don't shift and start talking about ISIS. Okay? <laughs> okay? Okay. And this is just a general prayer. Identity who God created us to be. Shortest, you ready? <laughs> they were like, no, I'm not ready. <laughs> what you need? <laughs> the moment whoever you tap, you just continue with that rotation, okay? Just, no, you don't tap, let her tap so she didn't know how to be a leader. Let her lead, you monitor. The monitors will come back and say where your strengths and your weaknesses are. And we'll start working on that. You in the middle, you tap the next person, but you shouldn't be continuing around that circle. It should go like you go here, then you go there, no. You don't have to do a circle right like that. When you hear me say shit, you know to tap the next person in. Amen? We ready? Don't be nervous. Identity. Ready? Monitors ready? Eyes open. And don't start doing the karate chopping and all that stuff. It's not in your body, I promise. It's in the word. Okay? Don't be doing all this. I don't see some. Okay. Ready? Short let's go. So God, we thank you right now, God. Use we, not I. We thank you, God, that we are God, made in your likeness and in your image, Father. We Come on, let you your voice. Us. That you are they doing the great me. thing, God, within us, Father. God, we ask, God, that you would come into us, God, and come into us and show us, God, who we are, God, and our true selves, God. For we know our identity, God, is found in you. For we know that you have created us to be a peculiar people, Father. We know, God, that everything, God, within us has came from you, God. For if you we, can be in agreement. Uh, 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 in agreement. predestined, God, even uh, uh, before the foundations of the world, God, that you saw us, God, and you knew us, God. You know every hair on our head, Father. Shift, tap a person. Come on, baby. Go ahead. It's not that hard. Tap. Stop. Come on, continue. Raise your voice so your the other people within the circle can hear you. How can they come in agreement if they don't hear you? Any two-edged sword, Lord God, so we, that we are able to know who we are in you. I thank you for answering all of our questions, Lord God, that you allow us to go to your word, Lord God, to seek who we are. I thank you, Lord God, that you allow us to seek your face, Lord God, so that we know who we are, what we are to do.
Shift. Come on, pick up, pick up. Okay, stop. Give yourselves a hand. <laughs> How many of you found out to be challenged and stay on track and be able to listen to the person that was in the center? Teach your ear how to hear. Listening is the perfect skill for prayer. Listening. Listening. And then it teaches you by being in this type of environment not to be intimidated and be secure of who God has called you to be. It also teaches you how to be comfortable with your own voice and wearing your own armor. Don't never try to be something that you're not and never try to tread in a place you've never been. Yes? Oh, who has a question? Everyone in the That's okay. Thanks, sweet. It's okay. But you got a chance to pray one way or the other, correct? Even when it was uh, two by two, correct? Alright, how many of you are coming back? <laughs> I didn't come and make friends, but I did come and make intercessors. Oh, okay. You all are blessed. The same way you're being stretched, I'm being stretched as well. It starts at home and then I can go outside. <laughs> because see, I gotta come back here. Other places I'm not. Okay? Alright, go ahead and look at your neighbor and say, your prayer life your prayer will, life. Not, be will not be the same from this day forward. From this day forward. I, will you I will challenge you every chance I get. Every chance I get. So don't be rolling your eyes when you see me come. Traveling grace, no incidents, no accidents, no hurt, no harm, no danger. 
Jesus shall come out of your dwelling. No social media. Uh-huh. I bet you hear God now. <laughs> All right, love you guys. Bye, Periscope. I love you. See you on Periscope, but not on social media. Get off Facebook. Get off Twitter. Snapchat. Instagram. And for those of you that are Periscoping and don't have nothing to say, get off Periscope too. Good night.